Story 1. My relationship only exists inside my house. My girlfriend, 23 female, and I, 24 male, have been together for 4 years going on 5 in August. All that time we've never really done anything outside of the house except for the rare occasion of going out to eat at a nearby restaurant. We don't go on vacations, we don't take day trips, we don't go to the mall, we don't even run basic errands together or take a trip down to the gas station. She has severe panic attacks preventing her from doing anything besides going to work or visiting her parents' house. I've been very patient with her over the years, but she doesn't want to get help from therapy and she doesn't want to be on any medication. She's tried to go through it in the past, but it never really works. We always end up going home early. As soon as I step out the door, I'm alone. If I want to go out or do anything, I have to see if one of my friends is available. Every party I go to, they ask where she is. Every time I have to go to the store or run errands for the house, I have to do it alone. I've been embedded on vacations with friends and their boyfriends and girlfriends, but I'm always alone. I find myself overwhelmed with jealousy whenever I see friends or people on social media taking grand vacations or even having a simple date night in the town. I've been slowly distancing myself from her and I've been feeling this heavy resentment. I feel like I've wasted the majority of my early 20s sitting on a couch. We had a fight tonight about how I didn't give her enough attention. I want things to change, I really do love her but I don't know if it's time to just call it quit or if I should ride it out and hope things get better. But as of right now, it feels like my relationship only exists inside my house. First off, I have to say, you're in your early 20s and you're talking about, like, grand vacations that your friends are always going on and stuff like that. Like, what early 20s pe person is able to do that? I mean, cheers for you having that kind of money in your early 20s or whatever, but alright. Um, also, you're still both figuring things out, I don't know. But here's what I will say. There are a couple ways to look at this. First off... Sometimes, different partnerships work differently when it comes to romantic relationships. There are some partners who are always going out together and being together, and some couples who aren't. It's perfectly okay to have, like, the friend that you're always going out with and hanging out with. Having other people in your life who fulfill certain needs for you. In fact, I would go as far to say, and I I've heard this in therapy, that it's not the healthiest to get 100% of your needs met by your partner. You won't, and it puts kind of undue pressure on them. Now that being said, it does also seem like she does have some issues that therapy can help with, but if she doesn't want to get that help, that's tough. And that is a pretty big chunk of the relationship to needs that may not be met. And if she's also feeling like you're being somewhat distanced from her because you want to go out and you're not around with her, then that is something that might need some discussion and might mean that you two aren't fully compatible. She might need someone who also is much more of a homebody and doesn't want to go out as much. And you might need someone who does. Um, And just because you're in love doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship will work out. I don't know. But uh, it's... Uh, either way, it's, it's a tough situation. Story 2. Don't want to tell me what that parking ticket is for? Okay. I'll get that ticket thrown out in court, along with jeopardizing any ticket the city wrote on that same form. The ticket. This was mid to late 90s in a northern midwest mid-sized mid city. Parking near my apartment near university was only on-street parking. Bad at the best of times, it got miserable in winter with alternate side parking eliminating half the parking on major streets such as where my apartment was. Failing to find any parking spots some nights, I would just risk it. Uh, sometimes I get a ticket, sometimes not, but at least I typically knew why I got the ticket until one morning. I was cited for violation number 27. I had no idea what that was all about. I, it wasn't an alternate side violation, not an expired meter issue, not a loading zone thing. I just didn't know what it was. What did I do wrong? I went by the office to pay the ticket and I asked the clerk, By the way, what is violation number 27? Uh, I don't know and don't want to get ticketed for whatever it is again. Her reply set me off. We don't have to tell you. Um, excuse me? I took my check out of her hand and picked up my ticket. It was the 90s. I told you it was a long time ago. We used to write out little slicks of paper called checks that the recipients could take to the bank and deposit. If you guys reading Reddit have probably never written a check. I'm old. Sue me. Now get off my lawn. I asked her who could tell me. She shrugged. Maybe the prosecutor's office? She replied. I left, ticket unpaid. I stopped by the prosecutor's office, ticket in hand, to ask. 
I apologized to the receptionist for such a ridiculous waste of time. I just wanted to know. And she rolled her eyes at me. I got nowhere there. Digging in my heels doing legal research. For a poor recent college grad, I certainly wasn't going to waste my money with a lawyer, but was hard-headed enough to want to know what violation number 27 was before I paid it. I resolved to go to the public library and pull out the law books with the city ordinances and state statutes. A library of physical being with actual printed books where people used to have to go to look up information before everything was on mine. I'm old, I told you, and stay off my land. I settled in, flipped through pages, cross-referenced ordinances and statutes, and found something interesting. Possibly, it was very interesting. I checked the court dates on the ticket and made up my mind. I would damn well fight City Hall. Court time. I showed up in court. Some paperwork was handed out to those of us who were present. Just before it was to be my turn, the prosecutor graciously offered to let me pay the ticket plus court costs to make this go away. Uh, this is a damn parking ticket. I'm already here. Why bother? After waiting my turn, I stepped before the judge. The judge said a few things, the prosecutor said a few things, and then it was my turn. Your Honor, I move to dismiss the ticket based upon a due process violation in 14th Amendment. A thing that the prosecutor might have gotten whiplash for neck snapped so fast. I told my story. I just wanted to know what violation number 27 is. I looked. It's not in the law books, not in the city ordinances. I am being charged with something without being told what it is. And the judge smiled a bit, turned to the prosecutor and said, I've been waiting for someone to bring this up. The prosecutor's jaw dropped. Your Honor, I went on, state statute requires certain elements to be on any citation for it to be valid. Among those things is a citation to statute or ordinance. And there are a couple other issues with the ticket. It does not conform to the statutory requirements for a citation. The judge turned to me and asked if I have the ticket. Yes, ma'am, I do. And she asked if I had the paperwork that was handed out when I arrived in court. I did. And then the judge took a few moments to walk us through that paperwork to show that neither the parking ticket nor the paperwork contained the requisite statutory elements for a citation or summons. Then the judge advised she would take the matter under advisement. The verdict? A few weeks later, I got a big manila envelope in the mail with the judge's order. In clearly written legalese, she went step by step through my argument that requirements in statute and ordinance and the utter failure of the city to write a single valid parking ticket on their standard form in many years. A years ago, parking enforcement officers actually took a pen and physically wrote an ink on a three-part pre-printed parking ticket form. Barbaric, I know. They didn't have hand-held computers to print them out. This was just a few years after we figured out that banging two rocks can make a spark to start a fire. I told you, I'm old and wicked that how you are about staying off my lawn. She detailed that to the city to allow their parking enforcement officers to write tickets faster, use their own list of violation numbers, expired meters number one, no parking zone number two, that did not correspond to any section number of the statute or ordinance. If you didn't have the list, you just might not know. And the judge threw out my parking ticket as a due process violation of the 14th Amendment. Oh, and that violation number 27 was parking too close to a handicapped ramp. I didn't see it under the snow. My bad. Didn't matter. I'd moved out of town by then. You see, back then, we had to move from town to town by by a horse-drawn carriage and everything. I could note everything up onto the Oregon Trail. I think this is a great story for this bird that I just... Oh, my God. The, the freaking, like... Like, political cartoon level of comedy in this. Back in my day, we have to write them down with a thing called a pencil. Oh, can you imagine? Uh, you young cage and your pen held computers. Like, God's sakes, sis. <sighs> Chill out. I know you stuck to the whole rolls of three with comedy, but holy crap. And also, yeah, folks, uh, know your rights when it comes to tickets and stuff because, uh, F that crap. I'm old. Get out. Bad day. Story three. Today I effed up by buying condoms at Walmart. Matched with a woman on a dating app and we headed off. So I wanted to grab some protection before I went over there. She lived by a Walmart so I decided to go there. Took a while to find but I eventually found the condoms in an aisle behind the lock and key. No big deal. I walked to the pharmacy and asked for some help in health. She discreetly radios for someone to go to family planning and tells me to head over there. I get there and who walks up but this 400-year-old man named Bernard who asks which one I need. 
I point, he nods in approval, unlocks the case and gets it out. I go to grab it and he nokes me and says, sorry but I have to walk it to the front, do you have anything else today? I say, nope, and we go to the self-checkout counter. Bernard fails to mention that it has to get employee approval after being scanned as well, something he doesn't have because he's not on self-checkout. So he hands it to this teenage girl who turns bright red and says it's her first day on the job and she doesn't have access. She then PAs the whole store asking for help ringing up condoms and self-checkout. I had to wait about three minutes while people stared at me and this poor teenage girl that is forced to hold on to these condoms so I don't steal them. Moral of the story, don't get your condoms in a gross truck stop bathroom like the old days, much less embarrassing. As just condoms, what, you, you embarrassed to let people know that you're getting some, huh? You stand there proud and be like, that's right, extra small. <laughs> no, I mean, that's such, why? I mean, I guess, like, teens and stuff are gonna steal them so I don't have to deal with adults, I don't know, but still, oh uh, god. Feel like... They're not locked up in other places, and they do just fine. Like, I swear, over at, like, a Walgreens or a CVS, they're just to the open, right? Walmart, why are you so worried about this? Oh no, are you worried that a couple packs of condoms might get stolen every year? Hoo hoo hoo! Save me from the $20 loss! I can't afford it! Story 4. Am I the a-hole for not attending my graduation party and telling everyone why when they asked? My family has not celebrated anything to do with me since I was 12 years old. My dad and his new wife had a baby that year and I was kind of forgotten about. I would get birthday presents and such but no party or anything. I got used to it and started a tradition of celebrating with my friends. We would go see movies or whatever. One of my friend's moms found out and started making me a cake every year for my birthday. When I graduated from high school, I had saved up enough money to go on a week-long vacation in New York City with my best friend and her mom to see Hades Town. I just finished university and I'm starting my new job right away. I guess my dad had planned a big party for me as a surprise, but I didn't show up because I went out with my friends instead. When my family started asking me why I didn't show up after my father had gone through all the effort for me, I explained that he hadn't celebrated anything of mine in 10 years and I didn't know he had planned to do so this time. He told everyone I was lying so I asked him to post any pictures he had for my birthday parties, extracurricular activities, or high school graduation. He obviously couldn't and everyone started crapping on him. Now he's mad for talking about private family matters. I'm just going over there to pick up a few things I have left in that house and just move to my new city without dealing with this anymore. Am I the a-hole? You are not the a-hole. That, like, nice of them to try and, like, plan a party for your college graduation after 10 years of not throwing you parties. But for them to make it a surprise and then be upset that you didn't show up for a party you didn't know about from a family that hasn't celebrated anything of yours in 10 years, like, that's on them so much. And... They have to know that that would get the family talking and asking questions, and you shouldn't just be like, Oh, gosh darn, Chucky Poo, I must have mixed up the days, my bad. Like, no. No, if they're going to do something like that, <laughs> you're totally within your right to out them as being jerks. So, yeah, no, that's on them. Story 5. Entitled parent upset because their kid won't sleep without visiting our cats every day, and we said no. Our neighbors who live in the same house have a three-year-old son and we have three indoor cats. One day the father knocked on the door telling us his son lately grew fond of cats and if it was possible that his son could see our cats. We let them in but it turned out the boy still has two left hands when it comes to animals and his father doesn't interfere when the kid chases them, screeching at them like a siren, pulls them on their tails and throws hard toys at them. As you can guess, we weren't too pleased. Next day, at the same time of the evening, father and kid knock on our door. The father demanding that his son can meet the meow meows again. This time my husband opened the door and was somewhat surprised by them requesting a visit again, blindsided and let them in again. Same procedure as the day before, a solid half hour of screeching and chasing the scared and startled cats. Day three, we just sat down for dinner. The father knocks on our door, letting us know that it's his son bedtime and he's ready to play with his meow meows. I kindly but clearly explained that we're just about to have dinner and that we cannot make this a daily play date because our cats are not happy about this as they're not used to children and one of them is blind. 
I told him it's too much for the animals. My husband and I are both working full time and our evenings having dinner together is our relaxed time we would like to spend alone. The following two hours we heard the kids screaming his head off demanding to meet his meow meows followed by furious knocking on our door which be open to our very angered neighbor pointing on his son's blue from crying face yelling at us that his sad face should make us think about the consequences of decisions we make for other people. His son won't sleep anymore without seeing his beloved meow meows. Yes, he seriously kept using the term and also the possessive adjective. I tried to solve this in a civilized manner by keeping calm but pointing out that it wasn't our idea to make seeing our cats his son's getting ready to sleep ritual and that he cannot expect from us to make this a daily schedule, but we were marked as general child haters already. Two days later our landlord called us to remind us to please not let our cats out in the hallway cause the neighbor's child is allergic to cats. I don't understand these entitled neighbors who are like, we're neighbors, I'm entitled to something of yours for whatever reason. That's not how that works, like, yeah, it's great if neighbors can be friendly and share and stuff and build their own very close-knit community. One might call it a neighborhood. Lovely. Darling. But you can't just expect stuff from neighbors. You can't just be like demanding and be like, my child saw your cats one day. My child shall see your cats every day for it is what he wishes. He's three years old. You can decide what that child does or does not do. And if the child complains, it's your job as a parent to deal with it. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.